with the, the Trump story. It's absolutely everywhere. But there is one picture in the Sunday Telegraph which kind of gives you the essence of the story. It really does. And on the inside of the Sunday Telegraph, this extraordinary photograph of the scene last weekend, the White House Rose Garden, the Republican Party's royalty all gathered there to celebrate the Trump White House. Except now, a week later, numbered here the people in attendance who have gone down with the coronavirus. And it may be the case, not just that the president himself has contracted the illness, but that an event in the White House itself was a super spreading gathering with person after person in this photograph going down with the disease. And indeed, some Republican donors who met President Trump after he contracted the virus but wasn't telling anyone are suggesting that he was going around spreading it himself. Yes, that's right. And the timeline of this, which we aren't really exactly sure about now, may become so crucial. And its influence on the campaign and what next is, of course, such a big factor. And for all of us watching British politics, of course, uncanny parallels with back in the spring. There are real echoes of this for me in that period when we were covering Boris Johnson's illness, what we were hearing officially on the record, ah, he's sitting up, he's looking at his red boxes, everything's fine, he's in good spirits. But then the tone of voice of people in government who you were talking to privately sounded as if that wasn't quite the case. So trying to piece together exactly what is happening here is difficult, but my goodness, it matters so much. Absolutely. Well, I'm talking to John Sopel about those mixed messages later on, Laura. Um, Fraser, could I turn to you with two stories directly about uh, COVID-19, the first of them from The Express. That's right, the Daily Express. And yet policy is based by looking at these metrics, looking at the number of reported cases day by day and week by week, and that's when the restrictions and the new laws and the fines and so forth are agreed upon. And you're suggesting that the entire policy is based upon numbers they can't trust. Yes, it's basically that we've got a mass not even that educated. <laughs> All right, let's turn to the story that I suspect will be of most interest to viewers today, buried away in the Sunday Times, and it's about where you can catch coronavirus. Yeah, this is a fascinating study, this one, saying that we have until now thought you could get um, virus... ...new news. Um, Laura, uh, Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, uh, when I interviewed him here last week, was very clear that basically whatever the government said, that whatever new government policies there would be on coronavirus would be backed by the Labour opposition. But there's a subtly different tone in his Observer interview this morning. There is. He's given a bit of a harder edge in this interview. I mean, as we were just hearing from Fraser, so much of this is hard to understand, hard to be sure of. Managing this pandemic for any government in the world is a bit like trying to drive a lorry on ice because so much is uncertain. But until now, Keir Starmer had been saying again and again he wants to be constructive he's been focusing very much on where he believes the government is not being competent where they're making mistakes but today in this interview he suggests that the government has lost control of this he says the virus has actually gone out of control and in part blaming that government for that particularly over the failures so of may, test and trace maybe this is the beginning of a, a change in tone from the opposition perhaps and i think we have seen that evolve over time you know Keir Starmer's sort of first job was to show and scream and shout to the public as his team saw it, that he was different, that he was going to change the Labour Party. Then in the last couple of months, the beginning of this autumn, we've seen him focus on the government's incompetence. But I just wonder, together with this interview and, and a sharper tone in some exchanges yeah. in Parliament too, that actually we are going to see a bit more steel, a bit more edge from the Labour leader in the uh, coming months. That's really interesting. Mm. Now, to turn to the next uh, big story, uh, Tom Bauer, who is one of those biographers anyone would flinch from being biographised by, if I can put it that way, has a lot of stuff in the Mail on Sunday who bought the book. In terms of the politics of this, I can see two interesting stories. One, uh, Bauer is very, very clear that Boris Johnson was genuinely torn about Brexit before deciding to back it. And I think that's absolutely true. I mean, talking to people who were involved in conversations with him around the time, I think that absolutely is the case. I mean, it is true that Boris Johnson did write two columns, one pro staying in the European Union, one pro leaving the European Union in terms of fleshing the arguments out and really convincing himself. But there is also, I think, always, as ever with any political leader, but perhaps particularly with Boris Johnson, there is a sense from people who know him of just how much his early years shaped the reason that drove him into politics and yeah. that seek, as many people see it, his seek for popularity and somehow that sort of personal need for leadership because he is a politician mm. who had his eye on number 10 for a very, very long time, despite all those roller coasters up and down. Sure that well, determined whether he got there. Those people who want to read more can, of course, buy and read the newspaper. The other political thing that really struck me, and I think The Sun has pulled this out um, of the coverage, is that right at the beginning of the coronavirus epidemic, pandemic, 
uh, Boris Johnson, it says, was told by Professor Ferguson, that very famous professor at the mm. time, that possibly, if he got it wrong, one and a half million British people might die, and that might have spurred him into the national lockdown. Yes, I mean, some very scary suggestions in that about the potential numbers. I think there's still a lot of intrigue and detail really for us to learn about what really happened in those early stages of the pandemic. You know, the government, the Prime Minister now admits himself that the government was slow to understand just how quickly the disease was spreading. But I think that kind of difficulty at that moment sowed seeds for what is still now happening, this mm. tortuous balance between looking at all this data, all these statistics that come forward from the medics, compared with what is also being reported about the economy and also how how people live their lives, you know, these limits Absolutely. that millions of us Agonizingly are living under. difficult decisions. Agonising choices. Otherwise. Yeah. Um, Fraser Nelson, can I ask you a little bit about the relationship between Boris Johnson and the Conservative press, if I can, or the Tory press? Because it's been very, very rocky the last few days and weeks. The Telegraph, the Mail, your own paper, The Spectator, of which he was once editor, you know, he would look to papers like that for automatic knee-jerk support in rough times, and he's not getting it, is he? He's certainly not getting it. And I think the explanation... Okay, and the, the, the question is the effect, I suppose, on Tory voters. And there's a poll in the Sunday Telegraph. Headline is quite good for Boris Johnson, actually. Most people still back him. Most people still think he's doing a, a good job. But then you press one line down and it's not so good. Yeah, I was looking at the... Um, in the, Sunday Telegraph, the next container. He, he, he sure is, Fraser. Thank you very much indeed for that. So um, Boris Johnson has a certain amount of work to do to rekindle faith in his leadership at the moment. Lord. I think that's absolutely true, and we've seen it not just in private, where ministers talk about their concern of what's going on, and including people um, who, as Fraser says, supported Boris Johnson in the leadership contest. But we've also surprisingly for a government with a huge majority only six months or so into mm. that we've seen it in public on the back benches and in the yeah. house of lords sure. very trenchant criticisms but i think some of it comes from the difficulties of this moment you know boris johnson was chosen by the tory party as a sort of cheerleader someone who was meant to bring sunshine and instead his leadership has arrived at this very very tricky moment yeah, very the hard for him minister said mm. to me the other day the mix between his leadership um, skill set and the moment is like trying to mix a fish and a bicycle. But a reminder, governments don't choose events that they have to deal with. It's not up to them to set what's actually going on in the world. Back to Harold Macmillan. Indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Laura. And so to the weather. Now, you may find this eccentric, but one of my 